Welcome to the Team 41 International Market Entry Presentation. Today, we will take a look at our market expansion of our meatless meat alternative into Israel. This is our product's first expansion into the Middle East, and we will be doing a double click to look at the opportunities and challenges that might be an outcome of our company's growth. The agenda today will first provide an overview of our product, including what markets our products can be found today. We will then explore our newest market expansion into Israel and review the strategy we are using to take this next step. Next, we will take a look at the challenges and opportunities that this new market presents to our product and our company, and conclude with where we hope to expand next and some key takeaways from our presentation. Let's first take a glance at our product. Our product is a vegan meat alternative that can be used as a meat substitute for cooking. It is certified both kosher and halal, which enables vegetarians and vegans from all backgrounds to enjoy it in their favorite dishes and not have to compromise on flavor or texture of their meals. As I mentioned, it can be used both as a standalone meat alternative or it can be added to a variety of recipes. It has the ability to be cooked by different mediums such as stovetop, oven, slow cooker, or grilled over charcoal or propane grills. Additionally, it has a neutral meat flavor, which lends itself to many different seasonings, spices, and sauces. This versatility is what makes our product stand out from other meat alternatives that come pre-seasoned or pre-cooked. Currently, our product is available in a subset of countries. These are the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Australia. It is produced in the United States, and a majority of our sales are done in the United States and Canada. A large reason for this is due to the larger populations, as well as a larger proportion of the population that practices vegetarian and veganism. With each expansion, we have considered the portion of the population that is vegetarian or vegan, and also the portion of the population that practice kosher or halal cooking practices. This was a main factor in our venture into Israel, as this population has a growing number of vegan and vegetarians, and the countries practice halal and kosher cooking in homes as well as restaurants. Back in 2010, Israel's vegan population was just 2.4%, and since then has doubled to 5% and growing. Because of the increased awareness of animal rights activists and how animals are being slaughtered inhumanely for the consumption of meat, this has sparked a revolution that has been spearheaded by Gary Uofsky, a Jewish American activist. With over 400 vegan-friendly restaurants, the opportunity to enter the market with a meat substitute product is now. Vegans from both faiths are communing together to protest animal rights and promote a vegan lifestyle centered around community and harmony. The growing trend has spread to the younger generation, where they are becoming more aware of how food is prepared and have been, have been starting movements to incorporate vegan and vegetarian options into educational settings. Israel's demographics are comprised of almost 75% Jewish background and 21% Islamic and Muslim background. With both the Jewish and the Islamic faith, they hold their dietary practices in high regard according to their religious laws. In kosher law, meat and dairy cannot be consumed with each other. Parve foods are foods that, neither, that have neither meat or dairy. By introducing a meatless substitute, we can penetrate the market without breaking any Jewish kosher laws. In Islamic halal law, the restrictions aren't consumption of meat with dairy, but rather using animal fats and alcohol in cooking. Because our product would have no alcohol, gelatin, or animal fats of any kind, this would meet the halal law and be available for consumption. For meatless meat to achieve its stated goal of supplementing the meat market, consumers must accept the products as substitutes for traditional meat. Initial research suggests that a significant population in the Middle East would switch to meatless meat if it was widely available in the market and priced competitively with animal meat. The meatless meat industry's ability to price its products competitively with animal meat is the second key to its success. Our meatless meat company will partner with the largest distributor in Europe to help move our product throughout Israel. Recent government mandates from the Israeli Prime Minister are rationing the amount of animal meat consumption, and this benefits our meatless meat product and lends itself to help us be the best alternative. Going forward, the meat value chain could be simplified dramatically, as clean meat labs could take place of farms, feedlots, and slaughterhouses. 
With all expansion comes challenges. Currently in Israel, there are over 100 meatless meat companies providing options to consumers. Of those, 40% are startup companies and are 100% dedicated to alternative meat production. Large food companies, such as Tanuva, Israel's largest food company, will start importing products from meatless food producers to grab a hold of the market. New technology also plays a role in competition and challenges. Just recently, 3D printing company Redefine raised $29 million in a Series A funding round as they research new ways to 3D print meatless steak. Israel is a small market and mature in many sectors. U.S. companies will face significant local and international competition. Israel chose to adopt European Union te technical standards over international standards. In the past, this has created obstacles for the United States and companies that have been doing business in Israel for many years and for new to market companies wishing to enter the market. The required documentations include some of the following, permits from fire officials and a number of ministries, including Environmental Affairs and Health, the Israeli Antiquities Authority, the Home Front Command, local authorities, and more. And each and every one of those bodies made its own demands. Handling each one takes time and money. Additionally, the security environment may escalate from time to time due to the geopolitical situation in the region. Along with challenges come great opportunity. Emerging markets often have a growing upper class population who are willing to pay for goods of greater value. The product we offer is something new and different. We would be capturing a new segment of the market and targeting new consumers to meatless meat products. Our company would have the opportunity to become part of an economic system that is still forming. If we only operate in one place, we are more likely to suffer when the local economy takes a downturn. A major importance of doing business in a number of countries is that our company may be insulated from these ups and downs. If profits are down in one place, another branch of your company may make up for those losses. Israel presents an opportunity as its market is on a current upswing. Additionally, Israel is open to foreign investment and the government actively encourages and supports the inflow of foreign capital. The FTA was established in 1985 and continued to expand since then. It has created a strong trade partnership between the United States and Israel. Israel is the second largest trading partner for the United States in the Middle East. The U.S. is Israel's single largest trading partner. In 2019 alone, exports of U.S. goods and services combined to Israel were $20.1 billion. Israel's startup ecosystem frequently ranks among the best in the world, but there is ample support for alternate meat innovation in particular. Joint venturing with a startup or acquiring a startup would be a cost-efficient way to enter the Israel market. Joint venture offers an opportunity to gain new insights and expertise of the Israel market. International joint ventures are very common nowadays. This is a great opportunity to collaborate with people from different countries and combine our strengths. Another alternative is acquisition. An acquisition allows our company to gain quality staff, skills, or knowledge of the industry and grow our company by having access to new customers and sales in a new market. Acquisitions may be the best way to make a long-term strategy to become a mid-term strategy. It is the opposite of starting in the new market from the ground up. Bordering nations of Israel are Egypt and Jordan. Egypt is another emerging market, while Jordan is classified as a frontier market. Both nations have plenty of room for growth and expansion for our product. These growing markets would be great to expand in the future. As we discussed earlier, Islamic halal law restricts including using and eating animal fats and alcohol in cooking. And because our product would have no alcohol, gelatin, or animal fats of any kind, this would meet the halal laws and be a great opportunity to expand in these Muslim Islamic markets. Wrapping up our conversation today, it is important to recognize both the opportunities and challenges that will be presented to our company as we make this expansion into Israel. Opportunities like a growing population who is adopting both vegetarian and vegan lifestyles will help with the adoption of our product. That, coupled with the ability of our product to be leveraged in both kosher and halal cooking, should prove to be strengths in this new market. 
It will be important for us to keep an eye out for the growing competition and stay competitive. Additionally, we will need to be mindful of all local laws and regulations that could present barriers to entering the market. Overall, this growth will be a catalyst to expanding into other markets in the Middle East and continue to support our vision of being a global supplier of our product to millions. Thank you for tuning in and joining us on this venture.